How do we find new themes for our WordPress site? In our last screencast, we switched, we learned how to switch to a new theme. In my case, I had been working in the 2012 theme, and so I went ahead and switched over to the 2013 theme. How do we go about doing this? How do we go about switching or finding new themes? I'm going to show you a couple different ways to do this. Let's start by surfing over to a different site. I'm going to go to the wordpress.org site um, and in particular I'm going to go to the themes directory on wordpress.org and that's just located at wordpress.org slash themes. I'll have the link in the show notes. Um, and so in this themes directory we see um, a, a number of different WordPress themes, free WordPress themes that are available for us to to use and to install on our site. How many different themes? Well, as of this, in the directory, there are over 1,900 themes. By the time you're watching this, this screencast, there'll probably be even more. That's an incredible variety of themes to choose from. Um, and, and furthermore, most if not all of these themes um, give you the ability to go in and customize them, them uh, yourself. So let's see how this works. I'm actually going to go and click ahead on the the uh, most popular link over here so that I can have a look at which are the currently the most popular themes on uh, on WordPress. And we see that uh, there are a few. We've got a little um, description here and a little uh, overview, a little kind of screen capture here. Let's take a look at this responsive theme. I'm going to go ahead and click on this. And in here we see a little bit of information here. It tells us that Responsive Theme is a flexible foundation with a fluid grid system that adapts your website to mobile devices. Ooh, mobile devices, we like that. And the desktop or any other viewer environment. And then it shows things like page templates, widget areas, template layouts, menu positions. Okay, we might not, you might not know what any of this means yet. Don't worry about it. Let's go ahead and just see how would we go about installing this, okay? Well, we see here that it says download. We could download version 1.9.3.5 or we could preview it. Okay, let's, you know, we could do it this way, but why don't I show you an even easier way to do this? I'm going to go back to the Manage Themes section here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click up here. I'm going to click on the tab that says Install Themes. Okay, And right here we see that we actually can go ahead and search for themes directly from inside your WordPress installation. We technically don't even need to go to the WordPress themes directory. I just wanted to show you where they're at all hosted. Uh, just to kind of drive home the fact that these themes, they're not installed currently on your system or on your server or anything like that. They're actually being hosted elsewhere and this directory sort of is, is sort of a clearinghouse for all of them. Um, but you can access them through here. Let's go ahead and see we can search for an individual theme. We could um, we could look at featured themes. Let's take a look at the newest themes, okay? And here we see some of the newest themes that are here. One of the things that we can't see here is the most popular themes, which is why I wanted to go to this site and show you uh, the most popular uh, WordPress themes currently. Let's go ahead and search. Let's say we were interested in installing this responsive theme. Let's go ahead and search for the responsive theme and see if we can find it. I'm just going to search it by uh, the name of the theme. I'm going to hit the search button and there it is right there. Responsive. It's uh, made, it's developed by a company called Cyberchimps and sure enough there's the author right there, Cyberchimps. Okay? Um, and we could go ahead and look at that. We could preview it. We could read the details. Okay? We could preview it or we could go ahead and install it. Before we install this, I'd like to talk to talk to you a little bit about how do you go about choosing a good theme, okay? Um, and this is where reading the content, taking a second to read this really makes a difference. There's a few things I want to point out to you, okay? Um, first of all, right here, underneath the preview button, there'll be a last updated, okay? You want this date to be fairly recent, okay? And this, if, today is August 4th, and this was last updated on, let's see, July 29th. That's actually very, very recent, okay? That's excellent. Um, if the update, if, if the last updated date had been something like, oh, I don't know, um, you know, uh, three years ago, I would be very worried about that very, very worried. That suggests to me that it is a theme that has been possibly abandoned by its developer and you're just going to run into nothing but problems moving forward as new versions of WordPress are developed and released. So, 
with that said, um, I strongly advise you to keep an eye on this last updated date and try to try to pick something that is fairly recent. Um, the other thing you want to see is this number of downloads. Okay, As, now this isn't always the case, but most of the time. Um, a significant number of downloads is an indicator to you that this is a good theme. There are, there's a large community of people who are using it, and um, and so therefore it's much more likely to be a stable theme. It's probably a very good theme if so many people are using it. Um, we have a rating system here. Take these ratings with a grain of salt, okay? Now in this case there are hundreds of ratings and so this is a pretty good indicator and you know 400 of these ratings, the vast majority are giving this five stars, five out of five stars. The average rating is 4.7 stars. That's a great rating right there. I'm not terribly concerned about these seven 17 rating, one star ratings down here. Um, there will always be some outliers. There will always be some people who are just maybe kind of jerks. Um, and uh, and so take the ratings thing with a grain of salt, um, especially when you're talking about uh, new, fairly new uh, themes that only have a few ratings um, because they probably haven't really gathered enough feedback yet. Um, so. Um, you know, but a large number of ratings like this, like hundreds of ratings, this is probably going to be pretty reliable. Okay, um, so those are some of the basic, and obviously reading through these, if there are specific features that you need, and as we progress through this course, we're going to learn more about different features. Okay. Um, but if there are specific features that you need, you can look for them here. You can read, you know, various reviews. You can do things like that. But the big things I'm looking at are when was it last updated? It's fairly recently. Okay, I'm looking for something most definitely within the last year. Okay, if not sooner. Um, how many? How popular is it? And yeah, I do want something that's fairly popular because I, I want to have that reassurance that there's a stable community of people using this theme. And no, don't worry, it doesn't mean that your site is going to look like everybody else's. Trust me, a good theme will allow you to do a lot of customizations to it. And finally, I might take a quick look at the ratings, okay, just to be sure. If you see a theme that has a big indicator on it, a big sign that says, um, warning, this theme has not been updated in a long time, stay away from that theme. Okay, sometimes uh, certain themes are flagged within the WordPress directory um, as being kind of old or abandoned and you do not want to install those themes. Um, there's a good possibility it won't be compatible with your version of WordPress and even if it is compatible, you're probably opening yourself up to some pretty serious security um, uh, holes. So that's how we go about comparing different themes, looking at themes, choosing good themes. Let's go ahead and install this new theme. I'm going to start by just clicking on the preview button to see what that's like. And this is kind of neat. This allows you to say, you know, this is a better preview than just this box right here. Let's say I've taken a look at that and I go, yeah, that looks pretty good. I'd like to install that. I'm going to go ahead and click the install button. Okay. And there we go, it goes through, gives us a little feed, some feedback here. We could do a live preview or activate. What does that mean? Okay, because here's something to, before we do this, I'm gonna go back to the themes section here and I'm gonna show you something. We installed that new responsive theme, but we didn't act, actually activate it. If I actually go here and, and click reload, we're still on our old 2013 theme, old, old slash new 2013 theme. We haven't changed our theme to the responsive theme. That's because installing and using themes in WordPress is actually a two-step process. You need to, first of all, install the theme on your server, and second, you need to then activate it. The reason we didn't have to do that with 2013 is because it came pre-installed. It was installed for us when we updated to WordPress 3.6. But when it comes to any other theme, any third-party theme that you want to install, you are going to have to install it first and then you're going to have to activate it. And so I've installed this now. I'm thinking, yeah, I really want to activate it. Oh, before I activate it, what's this live preview thing? The live preview will simply take your existing content and pop it into this theme so you can get a sense of what it's going to look like before you click that activate button. Because as soon as you click that activate button, your theme has been applied and it's out there. It's live, right? So sometimes it's a good idea to click the live preview button first. We're going to go ahead and click live preview. And let's see. Okay, so this looks a little bit 
different. I'm not seeing a lot of my content here. Um, so why don't we just go ahead and save and activate this and see if we can see how this has changed. Okay, so our content is our, our theme has been applied here. Let's go ahead and change that. And we see, okay, um, this doesn't look like as my content is here. But my content is actually here. It just happens to be that responsive actually does. Um, uh, responsive actually gives you a very customized home page, um, and we would have to go in and customize all of this stuff. If we go to their sample page, we see all our recent posts are actually still here. We could do a search too and find that. Let's go find that new band lineup. And then there we see that all the content actually is there. Um, and actually, check this out. We'll see how this is actually treating the images differently. Okay, it's uh, and that's because in, we've got different fonts. Okay, we've got all sorts of different. You know, the layout is slightly different. Um, and so. Okay, we've got a good sense of how responsive works. Let's say we wanted to go back to the old theme to 2013. I can just go to go ahead and click activate over here. Okay, so I'll click activate, bring this back. And as soon as that has been reactivated, we're going to go check it out. We're going to go back to our site here, go back to the front page and see if we have our old old slash new 2013 theme back. And there we go. We're back. And you know what? I think for our purposes, I like this one better, so I'm going to stick with this. But it's a great idea to experiment with different themes. Okay. Um, there are tons of different themes available. There are also some paid themes. Okay. There are some people who will actually create special themes that are paid. That's a you know, that's actually, you might have to find those elsewhere off of this site. Um, and there's a slightly different method for installing a paid theme. Um, I'd recommend while you're learning, don't worry too, too much about buying a paid theme. There are so many free themes available and lots and lots of ways of, of customizing those themes. And I find that often people buy paid themes simply because they haven't figured out how to customize the free themes. We're going to go through and we're going to learn how to customize these free themes. And by the time you're done, then you'll be able to make a decision as to whether or not you think that you need to buy a theme. Okay. So, there we go. Um, last but not least, I want to show you one more thing under the install theme section here. We see this thing called, we didn't really explore this, but this is a feature uh, filter. And this allows you to find a theme that are based on very specific features that you need. Okay, let me give you an example. Here we have, okay, there's colors. Okay, I, you know, the colors are actually fairly easy to, to customize. So I wouldn't worry too, too much about that. But here under columns, let's say that you absolutely wanted a two column layout. Okay, that was really important. You could go ahead and select that and make sure that whatever theme you got, whatever theme return would only be two columns. Or let's see what else we have here. Perhaps we are looking for a theme that allows us to have a custom background. Okay, uh, perhaps we want a theme that allows us to use custom colors or a custom header. Okay, um, I won't go through all of these in detail. If you, you know, if you are interested in learning more about any of these, you can always do a Google search. Some of them, as we progress, we'll learn a little bit more about what they mean. Custom menus is something that's coming up in a couple of screencasts. I'm going to show you how to create custom menus. Um, so perhaps as you are developing your site, you you may wish to take advantage of specific features, and so you might want to restrict your theme search just by selecting that, and then you go ahead and find themes that offer those particular features. So this, this feature filter interface is fairly intuitive, and I'll let you explore that at your own pace. And remember, the process for finding and installing a theme is simply to find the theme, click Install, and then finally, if you want to actually activate it, you do need to go find it and click Activate. Last but not least, okay, I'm going to recommend that you not leave too, too many um, unused themes down here. It's very easy when you're first developing, you're first experimenting with WordPress, it's easy to end up with like 20, 30 different themes installed here. Um, you can only really use one theme at a time. It's okay to have a couple themes here available for you in case you want to do some quick switching and, and experiment with stuff. But once you choose your theme, I would recommend that you go ahead and delete any themes that you are not using. It just means fewer files on your website and fewer files that you need to keep updated. So in this case, I've decided, you know what, responsive, you look like a nice theme, but I don't think you're quite right for the, the website I have in mind. So I click the delete button and I'm going to go ahead and confirm, yes, I do want to delete that. And there we go. We're down to just our our base 
2013 theme as well as 2011 and 2012. I'm going to leave those there because those are just default themes, um, but you could delete those if you wanted to. Okay, I think that's enough talking about themes. In the next screencast, I want to start talking about how we can go about customizing our themes so we can start tweaking the look of our site. Okay, but thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.